Hey everybody, welcome back, and we're going to talk about what is JavaScript. JavaScript was introduced in 1995 as a way to add programs to web pages in the Netscape Navigator browser. The language has since been adopted by all other major graphical web browsers. It has made modern web applications possible, applications with which you can interact directly without doing a page reload for every action. JavaScript is also used in more traditional websites to provide various forms of interactivity and cleverness. It is important to note that JavaScript has almost nothing to do with the programming language called Java. The similar name was inspired by marketing considerations rather than good judgment. When JavaScript was being introduced, the Java language was being heavily marketed and was gaining popularity. Someone thought it was a good idea to try to ride along on this success, and now we are stuck with that name. After its adoption outside of Netscape, a standard document was written to describe the way the JavaScript language should work so that the various pieces of software that claim to support JavaScript were actually talking about the same language. This is called the ECMAScript standard, after the ECMA International Organization that did the standardization. In practice, the terms ECMAScript and JavaScript can be used interchangeably. They are two names for the same language. There are those who will say terrible things about JavaScript. Many of these things are true. When I, when I was required to write something in JavaScript for the first time, I quickly came to despise it. Uh, it would accept almost anything I typed, but interpret it in a way that was completely different from what I meant. This had a lot to do with the fact that I did not have a clue what I was doing, of course. But there is a real issue here. JavaScript is ridiculously liberal in terms of what it allows. The idea behind this design was that it would make programming in JavaScript easier for beginners. In actuality, it mostly makes finding problems in your programs harder because the system will not point them out to you. This flexibility also has, it, it has its advantages, though. It leaves space for you, uh, sorry, it leaves space for a lot of techniques that are impossible in more rigid languages. As you will see, for example, in chapter 10, it can be used to overcome some of JavaScript's shortcomings. After learning the language properly and working with it for a while, I have learned to actually like JavaScript. There have been several versions of JavaScript. ECMAScript version 3 was widely supported. Uh, excuse me. There have been several versions of JavaScript. ECMAScript version 3 was the widely supported version in the time of JavaScript's ascent to dominance, roughly between 2000 and 2010. During this time, work was underway on an ambitious version 4 which planned a number of radical improvements and extensions to the language. Changing a living, widely used language in such a radical way turned out to be politically difficult, and work on version 4 was abandoned in 2008, leading to a much less ambitious version 5, which made only some uncontroversial improvements coming out in 2009. Then in 2015, version 6 came out, a major update that included some of the ideas planned for version 4. Since then, we've had new, small updates every year. The fact that the language is evolving means that browsers have to constantly keep up, and if you're using an old browser, it may not support every feature. The language designers are careful to not make any changes that could break existing programs so new browsers can still run old programs. That's mostly true. In this book, I'm using the 2017 version of JavaScript. Web browsers are not the only platforms on which JavaScript is used. Some databases, such as MongoDB and CouchDB, use JavaScript as their scripting and query language. Several platforms for desktop and server programming, most notably the Node.js project, the subject of Chapter 20, provide an environment for programming JavaScript outside of the browser. Real quick, two things. One. Uh, the language designers are careful to not make any changes that could break existing programs. Yeah, that's true, but you'll also hear about things that are called deprecated versions or deprecated elements of the language. And what that essentially means is that while they'll still work, they're not usually a good idea anymore and are not necessarily what they call supported in new versions. And then the last thing is when you hear people talk about how JavaScript is a full stack language, uh, Node.js and the database programming or scripting and query languages are kind of what they're talking about. And it's essentially why we're going to teach you software engineering using JavaScript, because we'll be able to go through all of the elements of software engineering on the entire stack, which is to say from the front end to the back end uh, and in between, using JavaScript. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.